is Essie Evans. Um, I worked in industry for 25 years with a large feed company in Canada and then decided to develop my own company and I do research for other companies uh, such as Church and Dwight, Farm and Hammer. We did some work trying to provide a new profile for fermentin and biochlor. And what we found is that if you use the actual ingredient composition of these, it's very difficult for people to realize the benefit that they're going to get. Um, fermentin increases the microbial protein that's produced. And what we did, this, this first chart, is put together a profile with the amino acid profile and uh, rate functions for the different protein fraction that reflects the result that you see as opposed to the actual nutrient composition. And we tested that in some rations and we were able to get mimic very closely the results that we were seeing. So taking that, we decided to look at what might happen if we were to use that as an ingredient in place of blood meal. And the reason we chose blood meal is that it's used in a lot of rations as a source of protein, um, but particularly lysine and a number of other amino acids. It has an excellent amino acid profile, but the problem with it is that it's highly variable. Um, you can have digestibilities that are very low, where the material's almost charred, to where you have a very high digestibility and you really don't know. And in a feed mill type situation, uh, products are purchased rapidly, the turnover is very high, so it's very, very hard for people to have a consistent response when they use blood meal. So we decided to see if we could make a blood meal substitute. And we did find a source of blood meal that was a very good source of blood meal. Um, sort of a known entity and we wanted to compare that with a control ration and a ration with just the fermentin in it which would increase your microbial protein and we would get that response and a fourth treatment that was that and a lysine source with the lysine source being megamine L. So we conducted a four period uh, four by four Latin Square uh, replicated three times at Atlantic Dairy and Forage Institute, which is in New Brunswick, Canada. Um, this is a facility that's owned by the dairy farmers of New Brunswick, and they have that specifically as a not-for-profit organization to look at different research that might benefit them as well as others. Um, that's why maybe some of the ingredients were a little bit different than what's commonly used. We had a grass silage, corn silage mix as the, the forage sources. Other than that, the ingredients were pretty much the same. Um, we had blood meal in the diet at 0.6% uh, of, the, of the diet, and we replaced that with either 3% fermented or 1.5% fermentin and 0.5% megamine L. The diets were balanced for all the different uh, nutrients. The protein averaged about 15% in all of the diets. Um, the fat levels were the same. We balanced out the megamine L with megalac. So the important thing that we found is that yes, we could substitute, um, we could make a sort of an artificial blood meal, if you, if you will, using fermentin and fermentin and megamine L. Um, milk yields were improved slightly over the control, but not really over the blood meal. But the important thing that we found is that we saw an improvement in feed efficiency. And that was really, not expected at the outset of the trial, but it was sort of a delightful finding. Um, that was probably the most important. Um, one thing that we measured, we, we looked at results for the last week of the study, which is fairly typical when you're running some of these trials, to just take a one single period. But we looked at results for, for all the weeks. 
And what we found is that for the first, if we just look at um, the first two weeks, when you're feeding fermented, sometimes when you initially start feeding it, the cows need to adjust. So an adaptation period is needed. And if you're willing to, to look at that, you'll see that, that you don't really get a, a loss in milk production, but you do tend to see a little bit of a dip in dry matter intake. So we were able to tease out those values and look at the results for the entire period or the last two weeks only and then the last week and you know see that effect and see the improvement that you get more on a long-term basis. I think that we have some, some good options if they're using blood meal, uh, the Megamine L and Fermentin provided as good or better as a very high quality blood meal as opposed to some of the poor qualities. We have products that are much more consistent. So if they're using something like fermentin to improve microbial yield and as well you're using the Megamine L, we have a consistent two sources that are going to be ingredient, uh, ingredient sources that are consistent to take out uh, possibly the one that, that would be suspect, that would be the blood meal. Um, on a cost basis, I think that there's also often, depending on the market conditions, but often some, some cost advantages as well.